viewer on YouTube Live, please go to the Facebook uh, channel. Please go to Facebook, St. Luke uh, Christian Methodist, uh, the Facebook page. Uh, please go to the Facebook page. Uh, we're having some internet issues uh, with the YouTube Live, so please go ahead and if you would, go to the Facebook Live uh, page and there will be, uh, all right, we're working on it, amen, but if you would, please go to the Facebook page uh, so that you'll be able to uh, catch us on uh, this morning. We're working on the uh, YouTube channel right now, amen, but we want to go ahead on and keep moving, amen. We apologize for being late uh, this morning, but uh, we're going to continue to worship. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want, amen. Come on, everybody, let's sing that. Come on, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, amen. Come on, everybody, let's sing that. Jesus is on the main line. Jesus is on the main line. Tell him what you want.
that you stop by this place and, and be with us tonight. And so God, as we worship you, we're asking that you would just simply be with us and that your presence
Amen. Thanks very much. Thank you very kindly. Uh, there, uh, we are uh, going to be all right. Amen. Those of you who are on uh, Facebook Live, those of you who are on YouTube, I see some of you this morning, and we uh, uh, we got a little late start. Uh, the internet didn't want to cooperate, uh, but we're going to make it. I see you there, Al. I see you, Lashonda. Uh, the lowest man, I see you, Miss Maiden. Amen. And make sure uh, those of you uh, uh, coaching Miss Anderson, thank you very much uh, for uh, being patient with us. And uh, we are trying to go live, and uh, it is uh, kind of a daunting task, but we are up to it, uh, and we're going to make it. Amen. God bless uh, each of you. Listen, uh, uh, thank you all again. Uh, as I've said um, in my other uh, conversations, you all have been doing a very good job as it relates to maintaining um, uh, the church. And um, as I said to you on last night, uh, some of the things that we are doing uh, as well and other things uh, to uh, take place uh, as we uh, continue uh, and uh, as we proceed. So I want to thank you very much for that. Also on, I believe it is June, July the 7th, the annual conference at 2 o'clock, I will send you all the uh, link so that you may tune in to that and then uh, other information as we go. Uh, thank you very much. We'll be uh, all right uh, as that uh, uh, proceeds. We're going to uh, go ahead and uh, let's hear from this music department one more time, and then we'll go ahead and uh, do a little preaching, and we'll take care of you. are still going to be blessed in the midst of these technical difficulties. There is still a word uh, from the Lord. Amen. Is that right, Brother Stenson? Amen. It's going to be all right. Amen. Uh, amen. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Uh, Brother Webb, would you close that book? Pull those doors back on that for me. Uh, Justin, you can close the door here for me now. Hey, come on. Let's go ahead and sing good. Let's sing something real good.
encourage us to come around this way, uh, if you would, and give me a little volume. Uh, I think on the uh, check that check that on there. And give me a little volume so the people uh, amen say that they don't think they can quite hear me. Uh, 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 there, I need the folk, uh, Sergeant Major. Uh, yes, on my on my monitor there. Hey, man, give me together that Justin. Hey, man, got some, some more folk coming us so out. Give me just a little bit more. Hey, man, as we get a chance to go through uh, this, uh, you got it there. Hey, man, just take me up just a little bit because I need people to be able to hear me there. Uh, hey, man, uh, take me up. Uh, take my volume. Uh, just take my up on here. Yeah, take me up so that they can hear me a little bit better. Think that's a little bit better. Hey, man, God bless your heart. Amen. Let's go ahead. I see you there, Tommy. Uh, Tommy Lee, I see you there, uh, Ms. Broussard. I uh, see you there, uh, Coach Anderson. I uh, see you, Jewel. Uh, let's see you at the Lord's Man. I see you, Von Cena. Amen. We're in here uh, now, and uh, we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Amen. Make sure that our, uh, how's our sound looking? How's our, our, our sound looking right here? Uh, there, how's the sound? Sound, sound all right? All right. Very good. Thank you very much. Listen, we are, after two months, we're still figuring out uh, how to do this live, amen. We thought about uh, the easiest thing for us to do is to record on Saturday and then replay it, amen. But uh, we want the challenge of doing it live, amen. I see you there, Ms. Robinson. Listen, in John chapter 6, um, uh, there is a scripture uh, that um, is, uh, that is uh, very, very, uh, pertinent to us, and I want to share it uh, with you uh, this morning, and it is John chapter uh, 6. It is a familiar passage of scripture, and uh, everybody should know it. Uh, in fact, uh, we it is the story of um, the disciples, Jesus' is teaching, and, uh, and, and, and in the teaching moment, uh, he realizes that the people who have followed him uh, have have no food. They have no food, and as they are hungered, uh, they the question is raised about how shall we uh, feed all of these uh, people, uh, Brother Stenson? How are we going to feed them? Yeah. When he saw the great crowd coming toward him, he said, "Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat?" He asked the, on, this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip said, it would take more than half a year's salary, amen, to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, uh, said, I searched the crowd and there was a boy with five pieces of bread and two small fish. Jesus said, have the people to sit down. Have them to sit in groups. Have them to sit uh, together as families. And the scripture says, and when they had all had enough to eat, uh, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. And so this boy who had five fish, he had, uh, he had five pieces of bread and two small fish for a lunch. A lad and his lunch in an incomplete uh, gathering. A lad and his lunch. And so he goes and they bring it to Jesus and he puts it in his hands. And his hands eventually multiplied it all. I need you to go ahead and help me. I want to talk about for a few minutes simply put it all in his hands. Amen. Put it all in his hands. Listen, uh, in 1976, uh, the NBA Finals were played between two teams, the uh, Philadelphia 76ers and the Portland Trailblazers. The Portland Trailblazers were a team uh, with their captain by the name of Bill Walton, and they had, uh, I believe, Maurice Lucas and uh, Maurice Cheeks, I believe, was their point guard. But on the other side, there was a team of superstars, the Philadelphia 76ers, who had George McGinnis and Lloyd Free, and at the time, the greatest ball player of that era, Julius Irving, Dr. J. 
in game in game six, game six of the NBA Finals, the Dr. J, Julius Irving had scored more than 40 points. He had the hot hand. He was scoring, and the game, they were down by one point. And the coach makes a call after a timeout with four seconds left. With four seconds left, the series could have been tied three to three, but when they came out of the huddle, instead of putting the ball in Julius Irving's hand, they put the ball in George McGinnis's hands, and he missed the shot. Here, 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 here were the Philadelphia 76ers who were looking for an NBA championship to bring validity to the city and to the sport and to give this superstar his first championship. They put the ball in the wrong hands. Here was George McGinnis who was having an off night and Julius Irving was shooting and not missing, but coach gave the ball to George McGinnis and it ended up in the wrong hands. Can I tell you, my brothers and my sisters, that sometimes in life, the difference between winning and losing is in whose hands you are in. Somebody write that down right there. Because the truth of the matter is, in life, every now and then, you can find yourself in the wrong hands. It would be seven years later, not until 1983, until Julius Irving would win a championship, but he would not win with that team. He brought on another guy who would give him the ball and who would put it in his hands by the name of Moses Malone. Here, here, I'm trying to tell you that life is about whose hands you are in. I know it looks like in the midst of a global pandemic, we are in the hands of science. We are in the hands of the government. We are in the hands of governors and senators and politicians. But the truth of the matter is, even in COVID-19, we are still in the hands of an awesome God. Here, look at this text here. Jesus gathers the community together. And here, in John chapter 6, it shows us that as they are gathered around him, they have witnessed the breaking of the kingdom of God right before their very eyes. However, there is more to this story than the people gathered together. Here Jesus hears the fears of his men because they realized that it has become late. It has become, yes, the time has passed them and they realize that it, that simply that now the people are hungry. Yes, after a long period of time, the people are hungry. In fact, they, they had not intended to be in his presence for so long, but now they are hungry and they desire something to eat. Watch this. Here, here, here. Jesus hears the fears of the men and he says, well, my brothers, why don't you feed them? In other words, if, he, if they are hungry, why don't you give them something to eat? But you see, they, they said it, it would cost us a year's salary to feed all of these people. People. And then I like what Jesus did. He does not look at the circumstance. He sees beyond the circumstance. I wish I had somebody here. Because the truth is, in your life, for every now and then, you've got to look beyond the circumstance. You've got to look beyond where things are and see what miracle God can perform. I, I just heard the choir sing, I'm looking for a, a miracle. I, I am expecting the unexpectable. I am anticipating, I'm making up my own words now, I am anticipating what nobody else can anticipate because I just believe that God is a God of of the unexpected. You see, if I could expect what God was doing, yes, I would need a God. You remember he showed up at a wedding feast in Cana and the Bible says they ran out of wine. If the expected had happened, everybody would have had to go home and they would have had to leave the party. But the Bible says the unexpected 
unexpected happened and he turned the water into wine and in fact the Bible says they began to say that they saved the best wine for last. My brothers and sisters there ought to be something in your life that declares my brothers and my sisters that in your life there ought to be some unexpected blessings that God has given you. I wish I has somebody here. My brothers and sisters, you've got to know today that all oh, my brothers and my sisters, that you've got to understand in here that God is trying to get you to understand and to see that he blesses you with unexpected blessings. Here, look at this text. Here they were. Here they were outside. Everybody is hungry and Jesus says, we've got 5,000 people to feed not all without the women and uh, the children. Uh, oh, my brothers and sisters, uh, look, look, look at the text here. Here there are 5,000 people, uh, not including uh, the women uh, and the children. Uh, and the Bible says, uh, Jesus tells his men, uh, go and see whatever uh, you can find. Uh, is there anybody here who knows uh, that Jesus uh, doesn't need uh, a whole lot uh, to do a lot? Uh, he can take a little uh, and make a lot out of it. I ought to shout somebody ought to shout right there. He can take a, a little and make a lot out of it because somebody here knows uh, there have been some times uh, in your life uh, when you didn't have uh, a whole lot, uh, but God turned your little uh, into a lot. Is that right? Uh, God turned, uh, yes, uh, your, uh, your, 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 turned, uh, your deficit uh, into uh, a surplus. Uh, God turned uh, what was not right uh, and made it right because the God I serve not only can he add and subtract but every now and then God knows how to multiply. Anybody here glad that we serve a God of multiplication? Look at the text here. Look at the text here. He simply said there is a, a boy out there. There is a lad out there. there there's a little boy out there who has a two fish and a few pieces of bread. Maybe his mama fixed him a lunch. Here, here, I like this little boy. Now, the little boy was not like most children. This little boy didn't say, my mama fixed this for me. She told me, don't give anybody anything. But here, he understood that Jesus was the one who Sisters, uh, when God, when Jesus uh, is the one uh, who wants it, uh, it's good uh, to put it in uh, his hands. Uh, I know, I know, children, uh, yes, uh, some of you have some talent uh, that is untapped. Uh, it's because uh, you haven't put it in uh, his hands. Uh, some of your lives uh, would be a whole lot better uh, if you put it all uh, in uh, his hands. Uh, some, some things uh, that happened uh, would not have happened uh, in your life uh, if you put it all in uh, his hands. Hands. Uh, oh, my brothers and uh, my sisters, I'm glad to know today uh, that I am living, uh, I am a witness uh, that, yes, uh, when you put it in uh, his hands, uh, things will turn around and uh, things uh, will uh, change. Have I got a witness in here? Uh, oh, yes, children, uh, look at the text here. Uh, look at what the Bible says. Uh, the Bible says uh, he tells them to go and uh, sit down. Uh, go and sit down. Uh, in groups, uh, go and sit down uh, in an orderly fashion. Uh, here they are in a desperate place. Uh, they're in a desert place. Uh, they're in a desolate place. Uh, they're in a deserted uh, place. Uh, but the Bible says, uh, in the middle uh, of a deserted place, uh, God gives uh, them uh, a feast and uh, a banquet. Uh, is there anybody here uh, who knows uh, that God can bless you uh, whatever you are and whenever uh, He wants to? Uh, you don't have to worry about your location. All you've got to know is that God is in the business of allocation. It means God will bless you wherever you are. And it does not matter. It doesn't make a difference. It does not change because God doesn't see scenery. All God does is he sees you. He can bless you wherever you are. He can bless you wherever you have been. He can bless you in every circumstance. I know, I know there are folk who believe that the only way I 
can get blessed uh, on Sunday morning uh, is if I show up uh, at the Lord's house. Uh, but some of you have found out uh, that I can get blessed uh, in my living room. Uh, I can get blessed uh, on the sitting uh, at the kitchen table. Uh, I can hear the word of God uh, while I'm drinking my coffee and eating uh, my breakfast. Uh, because the God we serve uh, can show up uh, anywhere. Uh, oh, children, uh, here they him uh, the bread. Uh, they bring uh, him the fish. Uh, and here as they began to break it, uh, uh, every time uh, his hands uh, would break bread, uh, heaven would uh, multiply bread. Uh, every time heaven would uh, break fish, uh, yes, uh, heaven would uh, multiply fish. Uh, and I see uh, here that everybody got full. Uh, that's why children, uh, you don't have to get upset uh, when other folk uh, are being blessed. Uh, you don't have to get upset driving new cars uh, or living in uh, nice homes uh, because the same who uh, will uh, bless them. Uh, he's got the power to bless me. Uh, so that's why when I see other folk uh, get blessed, uh, I start shouting. Uh, when I see other folk uh, being happy, uh, I get happier. Uh, when I see other folk rejoicing, uh, I, I learned uh, how to rejoice. Uh, because it may not be uh, my time uh, and it might not be my season, uh, but I just And I like this. He feeds the 5,000. He feeds the men, the women, and the children. And why did that happen? It only happened because they put it in his hands. Because they put it in his hands, something great, it began to happen. I've got to tell some folk here today that yes, if you want to see a miracle, you've got to put some things in his hands. If you want to see some changes happen in your life, You've got to learn how to put it all in his hands. When you want to see a new day happen in your life, you've got to put it all in his hands. I know my brothers and my sisters, you've got to bring your faith and put it in his hands. You see, he can work. We can work with him when he doesn't, when we don't have a lot of faith. But you've got to learn to have a little faith. Yes,